On this episode of Andy's Auto Sport TV, we're going to show you how to turn your daily driver into a rock crawling, four wheeling weekend warrior. Suspension lift kits are often installed purely for looks. However, there are some increased performance benefits as well. In addition to getting the ground clearance from the frame to the ground, you also get increased articulation. This is going to help you traverse those trails and overcome any obstacles you may find in your off-road adventures. Now, depending on the type of truck or SUV that you have, and whether it's two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, there are going to be different options and lifting components available to you. There are tons of different parts out there. Today, we're going to talk about the most popular. One of the most common ways to lift a pickup truck is by using a lift block. Now, this is a very simple uh, way to do this. All it is is basically a block that goes between the leaf spring and the actual axle. Now, the only way this will work is if the axle is actually below the leaf spring. Otherwise, when you put the lift block on, you're actually going to be lowering the truck. Now, it comes with all the components you need. Usually, there's some hardware. There might be uh, a uh, clamp for the top of it. comes with U-bolts and the bolts that you need. Now, one important thing to note, you never want to use a lift block on the front end of a pickup truck. They're just not designed to handle the abuse of the front of your vehicle. Another way to lift your truck is by simply installing a taller leaf spring or an add a leaf. Now, this is as simple as just removing your old leaf spring and installing the taller leaves or taking apart your original spring pack putting an add a leaf in there. And what this is going to do is it's going to add more curvature and more height to your factory spring pack. If your truck has independent front suspension, your options may include a dropped cross member, which will relocate the lower control arms to achieve lift, or even lift spindles, which will move the hub lower to effectively raise the front end. The simplest of lift components for an independent front end is a lift coil spring, which simply replaces your factory coils. Some trucks may have a torsion bar front suspension, in which case beefier lifting torsion keys would be installed to get extra height out of the front end. If the front of your truck or SUV uses struts, you can use a strut spacer kit to raise the front of your ride a few inches. Also, if the rear uses coil springs instead of leaf springs, you can use a spacer kit to raise that as well. Spacer kits are cost effective and easy to install. Although you don't get the additional suspension travel that you do with a traditional lift kit, because all you're doing is basically lowering the factory mounting points instead of installing taller springs. However, with a kit like this, you'd get the additional ride height and ground clearance that you're looking for. Finally, some lift kits completely convert your suspension to a different configuration altogether. Some suspension manufacturers will help you convert your independent front end to a straight axle, while others will convert your leaf spring suspension to trailing arms and coilovers. Taking these routes is obviously more expensive, but if you love your hardcore off-road action, they're definitely worth the price of admission. Something to keep in mind if you're planning on raising your truck or SUV more than a couple of inches is this might be the perfect time to buy a taller tire. Now this is going to uh, help fill in the gap between the fender well and the tire. It's also going to increase the ground clearance as a taller tire will raise the axle height. Of course, this is also a perfect time to upgrade your factory wheels. Now for our Project 4 runner, we chose a set of ProComp La Paz wheels and ProComp X-Terrain tires we decided to go ahead and plus size the wheels and tires on our Project F250. We wanted to set a 20 inch Vision Warrior wheels in chrome to help bring out the other bright work on the truck. We also went with a set of Falcon Wild Peak All-Terrain tires in a 355-60-20. Now this has given us an additional 5 inches total of tire height which is going to give us 2.5 inches more increased ground clearance. Now, if you're buying a complete lift kit, it's typically going to have everything you need to get your truck up in the air unless it's otherwise stated in the description. Now, in certain cases, they may recommend or require that you buy additional components such as uh, extended brake lines, possibly an extended pitman arm, maybe a drive shaft spacer or even a longer drive shaft or limit straps. But typically, when you buy a complete kit, it's going to have everything you need to get your truck back on the road. Now that you know what's available for your truck, we're going to show you what it takes to lift your ride. First, we're going to show you how we raised our Project 4 runner with a RevTech 3 inch spacer kit. Then, we're going to show you what it takes to put your truck in the clouds like we did with our Project F250 and the Fabtech 8 inch lift. Now, remember that the type of lift kit and the amount of lift will vary depending on your vehicle's original equipment. 
For example, our Project F250 does not have coil springs, so you're not going to find a coil spring spacer kit for this particular application. However, they do have a complete coilover conversion if you want to ditch the leaf springs altogether. We began our RevTech spacer kit install by supporting the frame of our Forerunner and pulling off the wheels. We then unbolted the lower strut mounts and pried the struts out. Next, the upper strut hardware was removed. The struts could now simply be pulled out. Using a spring compressor to relieve tension from the upper strut mount, we removed the mount from the strut assembly. The factory upper strut mount studs were then knocked out of the mount, and longer RevTech studs were installed. The strut mount is then reinstalled with the RevTech spacer in place. An additional RevTech spacer was slid over the strut mount studs, and the entire assembly put back into place and secured using the factory hardware. Moving on to the rear suspension, the shocks were unbolted and the body was raised to release the tension. The rear sway bar end links were then unbolted to allow the rear end to fully drop. The coil springs could then be pulled out of their seats. With the new RevTech rear coil spacers in place on the top of the coils, the rear suspension was then reassembled and everything tightened back up. Alright, today we're going to install our 8 inch Fabtech lift kit on our Project F250. Now today we chose to come to Pit Row, which is a do-it-yourself auto shop. Now this is a great place to go if you got a job that's a little too big to do in your driveway. Now our friends here at Pit Row, they offer a great service. They have a lift, a bay that you can work in, they supply all the tools. They're here in Santa Clara County, so if you're anywhere in the Bay Area, this is a great place to travel to do some work on your vehicle. With the wheels off, we began to disassemble the front end, which included unbolting the brake calipers and steering linkage. The shocks were removed, as were the sway bar end links. The transfer case cover was removed before unbolting the drive shaft from the transfer case and the front axle. The panhard bar was then unbolted from the frame. Then the factory leaf springs were unbolted and removed from the axle and the frame. In order to remove the factory pitman arm, it had to be heated to expand the metal. The new drop pitman arm then went on without any trouble. Make sure it's lined up correctly to avoid any major alignment problems. The factory pan hard bar on the frame was ditched and the Fabtech drop mount bolted on using the factory hardware. This allows the factory pan hard bar to be reused. The original bump stops were replaced with the taller stops in case the truck ever sees some really hardcore off-roading. Fabtech lifted leaf springs went on just as easily as the factory springs came off, with the only difference being that the new, longer hardware was used to secure them to the axle. At this point, the brake calipers and sway bar end links could be reattached and the steering linkage bolted back to the pitman arm. Some quick adjustments of the steering linkage got us close to the factory steering alignment settings. New rebuildable Fabtech DirtLogic shocks were then bolted on for a great ride and race look. To relocate the brake line on our F250, we need to drill another hole three inches down from the original hole, completing the front suspension upgrade. Moving on to the back of the truck, the rear end was supported on jack stands to keep it in place during the install. The original shocks were removed since they would no longer be long enough or provide the performance we needed. The rest of the rear suspension was then torn down, which included removing the factory U-bolts and spring plate. The truck was then raised up away from the axle housing for clearance. After clamping the leaf spring packs together, the center pins were removed so that the individual leaves could be spread apart. And the Fabtech add leaf installed with the new pin. The modified spring packs were then bolted back together and the excess threads of the new center pins were cut off. Next, the Fabtech lift blocks and factory bump stop plates were put back into place between the leaf springs and the axle housing. Everything was then secured with new longer U-bolts and another pair of Dirt Logic shocks were bolted up. Finally, we're now able to bolt on our 20x9 Vision Warrior wheels and 355-60R20 Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires. Now, if you're wondering about body lifts, don't worry, we haven't forgotten about you. We're working on another episode of Andy's Auto Sport TV to address body lifts and the benefits that they offer you, so stay tuned. If you want to lift your truck, just check out what we have to offer in our lift kit section at andysautosport.com. If it looks like there's two kits from the same manufacturer that are very similar, pay attention to the description and see what the difference is. For example, one kit might come with standard performance shocks, while the other may come with high-performance rebuildable reservoir shocks. The nice thing is that even if you go with the more budget-minded kit now, you can always upgrade later if you want more performance out of your suspension.
Nothing like being 10 years old again with 37 years of experience. If you have any questions, feel free to call one of our knowledgeable sales staff at 1-800-419-1152. If you have any other questions, you can also email us at info at andysautosport.com. We hope you've learned something today, and we'll see you on another episode of Andy's Autosport TV.